go and one at each end. I think it's on the end, eh? Here we go. Yeah, there you go. Match. <laughs> but do I have to? <laughs> if you're in the middle, you're going to speak. No, I'm saying Jesse can speak. Jesse can speak. No, no, no. But it's recording now, so this is going to be in the gay group. So, oh, okay, we should plan one bit. So I'll just, I'll just talk, and then, um, and then I'll say something like. Is it, do we still call it bubbles in level two? Not really. No, not no. Really. Just from, in the from our in the church. From our church, I call it our, our couch. Our whanau teals. Our couch to yours. From our couch to yours. That's a good one, actually. <laughs> that um, <laughs> or maybe because I want us to all say something together. So, oh, I'll go. I'll go like three, two, one, and then all no, of the all of us say. Hello! But <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, what's the normal thing to say? Is it because it's Māori? Yeah, because it's Māori language. language yeah. So it's all saying, Kia ora! Okay. Mm -hmm. Ko GC talking. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, you do it on the top. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 I don't know my one for the Do you want more light? Or is it going to be. I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, looks, it looks good on. Yeah. Okay. It's like moody. Or oh, maybe, maybe more light would be better. You can. This camera's You're recording the whole fight now. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to put that card on it. <laughs> it's like I'm moving it around. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna say kia ora. <laughs> yeah. Sit still. Yeah. Together. So yeah. Okay. What are we saying? Kia ora. Kia ora. <laughs> Three, two, one. Kia ora! Hey church, I know, just want to say... <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about what, I, I have to think about what I'm going to say or else... Yeah. Uh, okay, some posters there. Um, I'm so like... Yo, yo, what's up? What are you hey, hey. <laughs> you forget what you're saying, you're losing. Just, okay. just Grab the team tonight, Wednesday night. Coffee. Nah, nah, I know, I know what I want to say. This yeah. is us. This is our wish team. We're here on Wednesday night. We're recording this beforehand, so I'm talking to you in the future. We always say good morning, but you can see it's dark outside. I want to be better. I want to be better. I think I've got it. I think I've got it. Okay. Ready? And and look at the camera when you say "kill okay. it." <laughs> Three, two, one. Kia ora! Hey Church Fano, this is the worship team for today, for this morning, but it's not actually this morning where we are right now. This is Wednesday night and we're at church recording some worship for you guys and we hope you enjoy it. And just as I was, I guess, reflecting about what would that look like where we're not doing it live with you, we're not doing it with you in front of you, but... Um, yeah, we kind of wanted to make it a real moment for us, so we brought everything together really close and just played a few songs and really got into the space of that ourselves and, and wanted to connect with God there and worship and be real in that moment. And we're hoping that as we stream that moment out now, wherever you are, um, you'll be able to be real with God in that moment too. So whatever you're doing, um, yeah, just take a breath, take a moment, Get in the space you need to be with, and maybe say a couple of words to God and invite Him into the space that you're in. And, and we hope that the space that we're in now connects with the space that you're in there. So, from our couch to yours, have a great morning, and let's worship. Good job. Cut. <laughs> That's nice, Jesse. Yeah, I always like to do a bit of the cup.
Well, good morning. Church is coming to you today from the Richmond Hills. Lovely view over our region down behind us here. And look, we're meeting in homes today uh, right, right across the top of the south. So exciting to be here with you as we worship God and as we encourage one another. And look, we're just in such unique times as we've talked about, aren't we? Uh, you know, right now it's pretty polarizing, some of the stuff that it's, that's going on in our, in, our, in our wider region and community and nation. Obviously, we've got big decisions to make, um, to vax, to not, do we have choice, do we not, all those sort of things that people are, different people are talking of and different people are bouncing around. And I wonder how that's been for you. Has that been something that's stirred quite a bit of concern or worry for you, or are you quite clear in your decision? You know, regardless, I just want to encourage you that, um, you know, we pray that God would just give you wisdom and discernment and whatever way you decide that you just know a peace from the Lord as you pursue him and pursue all that he has for you and just seek to really walk in his leading and his guiding and it's just really a reminder isn't it but some of these things that it's not so much a theological issue it's not it's it's not a, a moral issue it's a medical issue and your freedom of choice and so I just love within our church family just seeing that real love for one another and just journeying with each other not allowing it to divide but allowing it to allowing people that freedom of choice just to say lord what do we do in this case would you lead and would you guide us so we pray for god's wisdom on you as you bounce that around as a family and as parents and leaders and as you discern that for yourselves with where you're to go look would i really would like to call today's sermon in many ways a new normal and what does a new normal look like what does it what does it mean when things have been shaken and changed so much that they'll probably never go back to the way they were. And I just want to give us the permission this morning, even in our groups, to explore what could life look like? What could church look like? What could relationships and community look like as we journey going ahead in a new season and a new time for us? And I've loved a couple of posts that Kristen Williams has put up lately and some others just really saying, look, really? Do we really want to go back to life as it was? To was, was church cutting it in the way that we really hope for when it comes to impact our com on our community? Was, were the, you know, the, the way we were doing things, was, was, that, was that all we were hoping for? Or are we, have we been believing for a long time for, for so much more? Is this potentially a catalyst for life to be done differently? For relationships to be deepened? For, for, for us to reconsider what, is, what does church life really look like? And what could it look like as we have our community in mind and, and uh, each other in mind and what we've had has been amazing and been so special and so great but as we head into a new season how can we embrace a new reality that could see a new release of the power of God on our community and our nation and the nations to see the name of Jesus lifted high and many people respond to him you know right now in Afghanistan they'd love the freedom that we walk in in New Zealand Right now, they're having to meet in secret. Right now, there's persecution. Right now, there's challenge. And in many ways, I think that, that um, this lockdown gives us just a little opportunity to really experiment with what if? What if we were in that place of persecution? What if we were in that place where we couldn't meet freely to worship as a large group? What if we were forced into small groups and huddles and homes and who would lead that and who would facilitate that and would we just hide away in our own little you know, homes and houses and pull back? Or would we be fervent and passionate to relate and connect and reach out to our community? So I just think this gives us a great opportunity to explore things. And so this morning, I just want to give you permission to, to discuss that, to bounce that round and to go, well, what do we hope for and what do we hunger for? How do we take the good out of that which we've had? And how do we go into a new season? embracing the new opportunities or even new opportunities for normal um, as, as we go right ahead. I think in many ways it's been easy to be fat Christians if we're really honest. That We turn up and we've got an amazing church service, we've got amazing worship, we've got presence of God, people welcoming us at the door, fantastic preaching, impartation, opportunity to be prayed for, we've got our cafes, we've got our programs throughout the week, Life has been good. All of those things are amazing. But when things are shaken and when they're shaken to the core, what really matters? What does church really look like when we strip it away and we dial it down? What does God really encourage us to go after? And I think the book of Acts, the emerging church, the new church there, 
a church that was about to be scattered to the four corners of the earth to and God used that to propel the gospel to nations such as ours over the years what was happening in the church at that time that we can learn from and be encouraged by if you've got your Bibles turn with you to Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47 Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47. Look that up. The Bible says this of the believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, eating together, having communion, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together, had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to those who were in need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. That's like the corporate gathering while they were able to. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts. This is just what we're doing today as we gather in our smaller groups. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Look, we read that and we think, wow, what a season, what a time. And yet we live here in our time, in our season, and we have such abundance and blessing. We have the freedom, as these guys, to do, to meet together regularly, or we have had until lockdown. And now we're in a season where we get to experiment and explore what would it be like to even do life more intimately with others. To go, well, okay, if we couldn't meet all together in one group, what would life and relationship look like? And we get some tastes here of some of the things that they were doing as they built each other up, encouraged each other, and as they preached the gospel and prayed for people and saw the power of God demonstrated to their community. I think, you know, if we boil it down, we see four simple things. If we go, what, what might be a new normal if we hit changing times or as we hit changing times in the days or the weeks or months or years ahead? The first ingredient I see out of that is the aspect of worship. They met together praising God. They met together to lift him up and to exalt him, to celebrate him. And we so love our worship that we have. Team, this morning, that was just beautiful, fantastic. And we're so blessed week after week to come and be able to worship freely, corporately. But what if? What if there was longer lockdown? What if there was persecution like so many nations are facing right at this time? What does worship look like then? You know, worship really is intimacy between us and God. Worship is gathering two or three others and just saying, come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's honor him. Let's pray and let's lift him up. The Bible says we're two or three. I gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. And I just want to encourage you that God is with you wherever you are. And when we can worship corporately, fantastic. But when we can't, God's right there in the midst of that. And he loves our worship. He loves our focus and our praise and our thoughts to be upon him. And as we do that, the weight of that which we're facing drops from us. And we're able to be reminded to trust an unknown future to an all-knowing God. So it's a beautiful thing. You know, we're talking about worship and what that is. And there's a great scripture. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And it just speaks to an aspect of what worship really is in many ways. It says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and your proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. You know, today I encourage you, we've lived a blessed life here in New Zealand. And we continue to. We've worshipped corporately, freely. But what if there was a season ahead? This time allows us just to dream and to think, what might worship look like? Worship is where you are in your lounges right now, encouraging each other, praising God. Worship is you with one other, praying and talking to Him. Worship is you praising God and just even in your heart lifting Him up. And worship is you choosing through what you think, through what you say, and through what you do, to lift him high. I actually think to God that worship, 
is more important than any of the corporate or group stuff that we do. It's more important than singing. It's more important than closing our eyes and raising our hands. All those things are amazing. But ultimately, God wants our heart to be a heart of worship to him. God wants us to hunger after him from the very core of who we are. You know, it's interesting as we consider persecution in nations such as Afghanistan, reading about them last night and, and just getting some of the testimonies coming out of that place. You know, as, they, as the believers leave their homes and go about aspects of having to go and buy food and do this and that, they never know if their son or their daughter is going to be snatched, their son drafted into the Taliban, forced to fight, their daughter forced to marry Taliban fighters, maybe even the younger wife forced you know from their home and into situations like that as well life is a risk for them every day and hearing them testifying and saying look we pray each day we commit ourselves to the lord we know each day could be our last people we live in such blessed times sure this is hard and sure we're seeing things that grieve us and hurt us in our nation but compared to other nations right at the moment we are living in bliss but this opportunity gives us a taste and a chance to dream and to think what really matters. It was interesting hearing some of the testimonies also coming out of that. And they were saying that the Taliban are visiting homes, checking to see if everyone is being good Muslim in their eyes. They check their phones. They make sure there's no downloaded Bibles or scripture like that. If they are, there's severe punishments. And they said, thank you, thank you for your prayers, they said to others who aren't in that nation, to other believers. They said, if it wasn't for your prayers, we would have been gone a long time ago because this situation is so difficult. People allow testimonies like that to spur you on to love Jesus with all your heart and to make the most of the opportunities we have to tell our nation, our people, the people of many different tribes and tongues who live right here in New Zealand, of Jesus Christ. Let's not become um, comfortable in our Christian setting or with our Christian friends, and but let us burn with a passion to, to see uh, other believers supported in other nations like that, but to see the lost one to relationship with Jesus Christ. So the first thing we see that really matters is that aspect of worship, living for God, honoring him, joining in worship if we can with others. But the second thing is that aspect of, of community. John 13, 34 and 35 says a new command I give to you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. People, we need to be so careful with our words, with what we type as keyboard warriors, with our attitudes, with our actions. People are watching to see, are Christians supporting and walking with each other? Is the unity there in their hearts? And of course there's challenge with that because we're all people. But I encourage you as, as Richmond New Life, as followers of Christ, in all that you can do, where, how can you minister peace? How can you minister reconciliation? How can you minister a connection and community to those around you in Christian circles, to our wider church, to the, the body of Christ across our region? What would it mean for how we speak and how we live and how we think to really have a heart for community as God encourages it? I love in the Bible seeing there that, that, that they met when they could corporately, but they met regularly in each other's homes. They shared food together. They, they praised God together. They had fellowship together. And what we're doing today is just a taste of what we can experience. You know, for years we've talked about the benefits of home groups. And in many ways as we do home church today, we're just reminded of the the benefit of smaller group relationship to be known and to know others to not just walk into a crowded auditorium and have the potential to walk straight out hardly talking to anyone but to actually do life with each other to say hey how are you doing is there something we can pray for for you you know how can we minister to you and your family at this time or to that which you're facing that's true community and that's true relationship every one of us desire to belong we don't want to do life alone and yet sometimes because of hardship or because of unsureness or uncertainty, it's easy for us to pull back and to be in our caves a little bit. But God's encouragement is to do life with others and to do life with him. So I encourage you, press in and in community. What does it mean to do life in community with others? Today gives you a taste of it in another way, but for you during the week, who should you ring? Who should you connect with? Who should you reach out to? 
how do we as followers of Christ worship him and build community in the way that he encourages us to. Another key aspect we see through this particular scripture that we looked at of this early New Testament church is the whole realm of mission. See, mission is not something to be added to church. The church, God's people, gather around the mission that God has given to every one of his believers. God said to us, Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said to us, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go, 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 go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And then he says, look, and surely I am with you to the very end of the age. This is the mission that you and I are called to. We live with such ease. Are we fat Christians? Are you a fat Christian spiritually? Have you just been feared and feared and feared, but now's the time to begin to run for him? Now's the time to begin to go, to carry the message of Christ to those around? Have we got comfortable? Have we just sort of gotten to a place where it's easy and we turn up to our, our, our worship nights at church and we turn up on Sunday and we do life with others there and it's lovely? But where's that burning passion for the lost that Jesus Christ died for? that God sent his son for, that Jesus paid for with his blood, that he rose again and broke their power of sin so that they might walk in freedom. You and I have that beautiful opportunity to really partner with the mission that God has given us. I've told a number of you this story before, but I, I, I love this picture. And it, and it talked of a, a coast in this particular nation where um, it was a dangerous sea, shipwrecks often occurred, and there was just this crude little life-saving station that was there. They knew people often died in the treacherous seas there and so when a ship was floundering they would row out in their in their dinghies and they would go out in their boats and they would rescue those who were floundering upon the rocks it was a beautiful and an amazing thing our lives were changed and transformed and generations lived because of that and, and continued on but then some of those people sort of they felt an allegiance to, to that group of people and so they began to hang out at the club and it wasn't long before some gave money and their club was done up and it became a better and a, and a flasher place and it went from just having crude bunks where they could put people to, you know, to sleep where they'd first come in in the night to quite beautiful beds and different rooms and they built onto it and they created a club room and a food room and eventually a cafe and, and it became more and more comfortable and they still saved people but they had a beautiful plush place and but then the time came when attitudes changed a little bit. Some decades had gone by and, and um, a, a lot of people were really quite comfy and they liked going to the cafe and the restaurants and they enjoyed the relationships they had there with each other and they met there regularly and they hang out and they told their stories and they laughed. And when the siren went off to say a ship was floundering, no longer did those people go, but they began to hire people to go on their behalf and things eventually got messy when those people the people that have been rescued came back into the clubhouse dripping and wet and so they installed sort of outside showers for those ones and outside bunks for those ones because they didn't want to you know encroach on the ease and the comfort and the laughter and the fun these guys were having as part of their community eventually it, they got so comfortable and so full of ease that they even said look you know do we even want to be the ones doing this anymore and you know and yet within them there were new ones who were going I permit the passion to rescue people just like I've been rescued and almost without doubt time after time after time a, a new lifeguard station was started down the road and those passionate people burn with a passion and a fervor to rescue and to save lives the other club just went on to become a social club the other station it just went on to become a harbor place of relationship and connection and laughter and joy but it took the cutting edge people to forge something new to go and save lives time and time and time again and if you get the analogy, or you get the picture, it's the risk with us in church that we can become so comfortable in our community, so comfortable in our buildings, so comfortable with the way that we do life now and the ease that we do life that we forget that people every day are floundering. Their lives are at risk. Eternity is beckoning them and without the hope of Jesus Christ, it's an eternity in hell away from, away from God. And so God needs lifesavers like you and I, people who burn with a passion and a fervor, who haven't got so comfortable we only want the ease, but who continue to say, we must reach 
the lost. We must reach the dying. We must reach those in our community who don't yet know Jesus Christ. That is what we're called to. That's the mission that God has given every single one of us. There are three things we've talked about so far that we see in the New Testament church, but that aspect of worship, that aspect of community, that aspect of mission, and then we've got an aspect of just of, of real heartfelt commitment. It's a commitment and a fervor and a passion first to the Lord and then to each other, to work together to honor Jesus Christ. I just want to encourage you that, you know, we won't be able to achieve that which God has called us to without a commitment to that which he is calling us to. Don't allow yourself to become comfortable like those people in, the, in that life-saving um, you know, uh, club some decades on. But instead, allow yourself to feel that commitment and fervor and passion for the Lord and for each other. And allow that to spur you on to say, even amongst your group today, what can we do to make a difference? How can we live in such a way that lives can be changed and shaped and impacted and pointed towards Jesus Christ? What does it mean to choose to sacrifice for the kingdom? As a part of my commitment, what does that mean that I'll give? My resources, my, my finance, my time, my gifts, who I am. Don't allow life to pass you by. It's racing on by so fast. Make the most of every moment. Don't allow the old normal to be something that you hunger for, but allow God to build a new normal within your heart and within your life so that you burn passionately and that now and in the days ahead to see people come to know him. What does new church look like? I'm not saying we, we, we don't do what we've been doing. It's a beautiful and a blessed thing. But let's allow fervor to come out of these changing times that we're in. Let, allow, let us allow it to propel us, to reevaluate and to go, yes, it's a blessed privilege to gather together. And when we can, we'll do that. That's like church on Sunday. But we will also gather in smaller groups. We will also be passionate for mission. We'll be committed to each other and we'll be committed to the Lord. And just like the New Testament church, we will fervently encourage one another. You know, the time came for them when they were scattered. The comfort that they'd known was no longer there. The support was no longer there. Lives were at risk. Times were changing. And I believe we are, the Bible talks about that persecution, great persecution will come at the end and many people will fall away. Times like this allow us to prepare our hearts and to rethink what's really important. What would persecution look like? How could it shake or shape our faith? Let's allow these principles here to be applied in our lives so that as things change in the days ahead, for good and for bad, we're prepared. We're solid in the Lord. We're committed to each other. We're in connection with one another. If there wasn't leadership from central bodies, churches and other things, what would life look like for us? Who would we ring? Who would be our confidence? Who would be our prayer partners? Who would we worship with? How would we reach out together and strategize? Don't do life alone. Connect into community and go after all that God has for you in this new season and this new normal that's ahead. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for all these people today. In your presence, hungry for you. I pray that you would stir us, Lord, to be fervent and passionate that we would choose Jesus to prioritize you over everything this world would offer. Lord, we commit each other to you and pray for your strength, your wisdom, your encouragement in these present days. And Lord, may you show us, Lord, how we can reach our community for Jesus Christ, how we can preach the gospel, how we can share your love, and how we can make a difference to the wider world around us. Thank you, Lord. Bless every person here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look in your groups right now. I just really encourage you just to take some time. One, just have a wee discussion around this. What does new normal look like? What's really important and how do we go after that and foster that? But also then too, it'll be great just to either get into small groups within your group or just to share some prayer needs you have at the moment and pray for each other. Prophesy over each other, encourage each other before you share some food together or before you head on your way. And just... Just allow that aspect of community that we read about today in the New Testament to really just be a part of the fellowship that you enjoy today. You guys are amazing. Love you. Missing not being together in a larger group, but, but also this is a beautiful opportunity for us to really explore aspects of newness in God, with him, and for him. Have a great week, and we'll be in touch. Love you guys. See ya. Bye.